Well, hello. It is really nice to see you today, and I am glad that school has ended and that summer has begun and that this is a time where instead of feeling like everything's different, things might feel kind of normal for you, that you can run and play until you're exhausted and you can just drop into a dinner uh, table, into a chair at a dinner table at night, a sweaty, dirty mess. You get fed, you get loved, you get cleaned up, you go to bed. I am hopeful that while the adults are still trying to figure things out, at least for you, things feel more normal. And while we're talking about normal things, you know, we keep learning about God. We keep studying and we keep remembering and we keep asking for God to be with us and to help us. And we keep getting clearer and clearer on what we need help with or from, right? Does that make sense to you? Good. So last time we talked about how God created everything. That if you look around and you wonder where ducks came from, well, that's God's work. And if you wonder, if you look around and wonder where families came from, well, that's God's work. That God created everything. And so today, we're going to talk about what happened after that. So our first parents, Adam and Eve, were created by God. They were very happy. They lived in a beautiful place. They had a job where they were supposed to take care of the garden that God had made for them and planted for them. And everything was good. Now, there were some rules. There's always rules, right? I mean, in your family, there's rules. In my family, there's rules. And God had a few rules for them. The rules weren't to mess up their fun. The rules were to keep them safe. And one of the rules was there's a tree right in the middle of the garden that you shouldn't eat from. That's not for you. It's not, we're not even going to talk about it. Just stay away from it. Now, that's a pretty clear rule, isn't it? Right? There's no wondering about that. If it's Tuesday after 10, can I touch that tree? No, don't touch the tree. Don't climb the tree. Stay away from the tree. Don't eat the fruit on the tree. Well, that was the rule. And it's God's garden. And God made everything in it. And God made Adam and Eve. So God has the right to make whatever rule he wants, right? And especially since God is a good and loving God and only gives us rules that help us and protect us, Adam and Eve should have listened. Do you know where this story's going? Yeah, it's a pretty sad story. So there was a serpent in the garden, and the serpent liked causing trouble, liked stirring things up, liked hurting people and making things bad. And the serpent one day said to Eve, did God really say you can't eat of any tree? No fruit for you. And Eve said, no, that's silly. We can eat from anything. It's all ours. God gave it all to us to enjoy and to use. Well, except for that tree there. We're not supposed to touch that tree. We're not supposed to climb that tree. We're not supposed to eat off that tree. That's God's tree. And the serpent said, why? And Eve said, well, we'll die if we touch that tree. And the serpent said, oh, you won't die. God's hiding something from you. He's keeping something from you. God knows that if you eat from that tree right there, you'll be like God. You won't be a person anymore, really. You'll have a mind like God's mind, and you'll know the things that God knows. And Eve thought about that, and that sounded pretty good. Now, we don't know if she talked to Adam there, but we know that she decided to go and get some fruit of that tree, and she gave some of it to Adam, and they both ate of it. They both knew where it came from. They both knew that they were breaking the rules. And as soon as they ate that fruit, everything changed. Oh, the garden was still beautiful. The animals were still there. But Adam and Eve were different. They had broken God's rule, and they had done it on purpose. And everything changed. 
Suddenly they felt ashamed. Suddenly they felt like they were in trouble, that God was on a different side from their side. They, they, they thought that they were really, things were really going to go bad really fast. And they went and they hid in the bushes and they realized that they weren't wearing any clothes. And they, they quick, they, they put together leaves and they stitched together leaves to cover themselves. And they were so, so scared. And then they heard God coming. And God called out to them, where are you? And they said, whoa, we're over here, we're hiding. Why are you hiding? Well, because we're naked and we didn't want you to see us. And God says, who told you all that? Have you been eating from the tree that I told you not to touch? And Adam, this is kind of embarrassing what, what he does. He blames Eve. Adam says to God, well, yeah, I, I did, but only because the woman that you made for me, well, she, she gave me some of that fruit, and so, so I did, but it's not really my fault. It's, it, it's her fault, and maybe even some of your fault, because you made her. Isn't that an awful thing to do and to say? When you make a mistake, are you supposed to blame other people, or are you just supposed to take responsibility? Of course, take responsibility. Adam didn't do that. So God looks at Eve, and Eve says, well, yes, but it was because the serpent told me to, and it's not really my fault. It was the serpent that told me to do it. So, um, yes, I did eat the fruit, but uh, not my fault. And God was so sad, so sad, because he knew that once disobedience enters the world, everything is different. Everything is harder. Some things become impossible. And God knew that he couldn't let these people stay in the garden, that, that they don't belong there anymore. The garden was a place for, for people who lived completely obedient and good lives. And Adam and Eve weren't those people anymore. They didn't fit anymore. Now, God has to punish them, of course. When you do the wrong thing, your parents have to discipline you. They have to teach you so that you grow into a good person. You understand that, right? Well, God had to punish them. First, he punished the serpent. He said, listen, you, what you did here, not going to forget that. You are going to crawl around on your belly in the dust your whole life. And there's going to be a day where you pay big time. And then... He said to the man, or first he talked to the woman, he said, because you've done this, your life is just going to be harder. All the parts of your life are going to be harder. And then he looked at the man and he said, and your life is going to be very hard indeed. That whereas you've been used to just picking fruit off trees and living in ease and comfort, you're going to have to work. You're both going to have to work. Your lives are going to be hard. And when you die, you're going to turn into dust again. And you are going to die. And you are going to turn into dust. But God didn't hate Adam and Eve. God made clothes for them. And he sent them out of the garden, but he made sure that they had what they needed to get started. Put them to work. Kept them at work. Never, ever, 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 ever forgot about them. Continued to talk to them and to lead them. And worked from that moment on for, on a plan to bring them back. On a plan to forgive their sins. On a plan to make them whole. Right? Actually, God had known all of this because God knows everything. But God knew right there that this wasn't the last thing, that naughtiness wasn't the end, that punishment wasn't the end, and that God intended to make them and us good again. Now, you know how this story ends, that Jesus comes, and Jesus fixes things, including my heart and your heart, to make things good again. But that doesn't happen for a long time in our stories. Right now, Adam and Eve are out of the garden. They're living a hard life, but God still loves them. Now, here's the part that's a little hard to get your head around. You know that doing the wrong thing, even though you know it's wrong, 
we do that, don't we? That we think that what Adam and Eve did started a brokenness that's in every one of us. That in every one of us, there's this thing that we want what we want because we want it when we want it, right? That if your parents say, don't watch TV, you think, I want to watch TV. If your parents say, don't sneak cookies, you think, those are some good looking cookies, right? That we think that Adam and Eve broke something. And not just in themselves, that they broke something in all of us. And that when we hear this story, we remember that that's not how it's supposed to be. That we're supposed to be people who do what God tells us to do and love doing what God tells us to do. And that someday there'll be a day when God makes it so that that's who we are again. So today's a day when we hope, today's a day when we wait, today's a day when we tell the truth about ourselves, that there seems to be something broken in us, and today's the day that we thank Jesus, that he comes to us, even though we're broken, even though we're naughty sometimes, and even though we make mistakes, sometimes on purpose, and Jesus forgives us and loves us and wants to bring us home. There's a lot of big ideas in this story. I hope that you join me in thinking about it. We're going to talk about it a lot more when you get bigger. It means different things, bigger things, more things to us as we get bigger, as we think it through. But for today, I just want you to remember that God never let go of Adam and Eve, even while punishing them. And God will never let go of you. You're precious to God. He made you. He has a plan for you. And he loves you. I hope very soon we'll be able to get back together. I hope very soon life becomes a little more normal. But whatever happens, we're all in God's hands and he will take care of you. It's good to spend this time together. And I thank you that you're watching these little videos. You be well. Bye-bye.